Right, so this is just a bit of a quick look at um, number one, 1977 this was, 1977, unbelievable. This was the first CB action, 80 cents in 1977, probably a reasonable amount of money back then. Actually, I should try and get this camera a little bit better, sorry. That might be better. So 1977, and um, um, an amateur's views on CBs, um, extracts from the NCRA and uh, postal and telecommunications back then, and Dick Smith reports. There you go. See, even way back then, you know, interviews with Dick Smith, uh, etc., in the first ever CB action. And of course, if you look in here, look at that. I mean, that's a bit glary actually. Let's see if we can get the glare out of that. I mean, Lafayette had their own, you know, inside front cover page. And as we sort of know, Lafayette went to go and do quite a few Telsat radios, all Cybernet chassis and that. And uh, CB Action number one. This is this is where it all started. Oh, geez, this is some memories when I was a kid. Radio Parts Group. Look at the Bengal sideband, three hundred and forty-two dollars. <laughs> I've just got one of these Granada bases coming to me. Um, <laughs> If you're looking at this, um, Andre, check out that. $169 back in 1977. And, uh, of course, the Craco, um, which, um, you know, what was that? $259. I'm having a look at it through the camera. You know, I'm looking at these radios and I'm thinking, got it, got it, got it. Um, yeah, got it. Um, getting it. <laughs> got it. My goodness. Uh, so... It's good to see we've got a bit of 1977 stuff. And Mark Fogarty, the uh, first ever editor, I think, from memory. Um, and look at that, the Ringo. The Ringo, oh, just doesn't this bring back memories? I know this is one of my more stupid videos that you're probably going to look at and go, really, did we have to see all that? Well, yeah. Now, remember Just CB? Just, you know, for the next 1977, for the next 20 years, these guys just, you know, they had bulk advertising everywhere. And... Uh, uh, good company, and I don't actually. Someone might want to tell me what happened to them, whether they um, modified themselves into commercial or what actually went on. Is there another page there? There is. Daycom Electronics. Don't remember these guys. Guys, sorry, but um, the fact they had Barlow Wadleys and geez, see once again, this was a whole different era. Um, <laughs> C.J. McCall. Oh my goodness. Self-appointed CB was at Dick Smith is trying to secure the one and only CJ McCall for an Australian visit, 1977. I reckon if anyone could have done it, <laughs> he'd be the man. Oh my goodness. This is CB action number one. And I'll tell you what, you know, um, this this was what got us all inspired. You know, and some of you guys are a little bit older than me. I'm, I'm 54, so this was kind of where I was... Um, getting my first 23 channel AM set and putting a five foot helical whip on the uh, on the gutter of the house and thinking how come people are allowed to put up Ringo's you know and I can't do it because my mum won't let me <laughs> oh boy um, we'll go through this uh, they started at this the Charlie Bravo Action Club there you go um, and uh, this was to um, uh, subscribe to uh, to the CB action, etc. Now, so sort of, I mean, here's someone I know well with Bay Electronics. Uh, obviously, they were the ASU agents, and um, so even they did a bit with uh, Gemtronics. And um, geez, all these ring such a bell. Incredible. Um, I look. You're going to have to sort of bear with me. I pulled out what is a full collection of CB action over there, and um, I have never had number one. Uh, the CB action number one has been very difficult for me to uh, secure and a mate of mine down in Tassie sent this up with a few others and uh, really appreciate that too there's a bit of a younger Dick Smith CB whiz oh, God. and there's an interview um, with uh, Dick Smith through this um, CB will boost amateurs well didn't that happen didn't that, I mean absolutely you know um, 100% it did 
Look at these guys. I mean, these are a lot of guys who um, the names ring a bell, and you know um, how long they lasted in business. I, I, you know, can't really say. But um, you know, a lot of the big companies uh, they they hung in there and, and gave these guys a lot of advertising uh, for a long, long time. Um, geez, I think I'm having more trouble. Uh, sorry, more fun looking at the uh, the adverts and just having a look at just you know. Um, Lafayette had such a, a presence back in 1977. I, you know, I, I've got to be honest. Being an Adelaide boy, we didn't see so much of that. Uh, but um, oh, that's right, the CB Fun comics. Um, then you've got um, look at the price of you know your ground planes and oh, look crazy. A four element beam is going to cost you fifty eight dollars ninety five. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just, you know, oh, crazy. All right, that's another. Uh, all right, so this is getting into uh, submissions of um, what will make up CB radio. Uh, so they, obviously the P&T back in then, those days. Um, here you go, Andre. Is that Granada base again? <laughs> God, I'm glad I bought that off you now that I've seen it in there. Oh, geez, mate, the things we do. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, and there's another name I, I don't remember, uh, Farad Sales in uh, Caulfield. So there you go. Oh, now, okay, now there's a bit of history here. Watson's Communications. Now, let me tell you what happened to Watson's. This was at 77 Prospect Road Prospect. Now, this is a great bit of history, and I didn't know. Um, um, let's have a look here. Watson Communications was bought out by Steen Jensen and his father, Vern Jensen, and Watson Communications became Jensen Electronics at 75 Prospect Road. They initially started at 77, and by the time I got to them to uh, do my apprenticeship, uh, it was uh, uh, at 75 Prospect Road. But Watsons were at an expo, and uh, basically um, I bought my first CB radio. Well, I didn't. Dad didn't, and I paid him back. <laughs> I said, Dad, 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 I've got to have one of these. And so that's what sort of happened. That's where it all started. That's where it started. So there you go. And and it's in the first official CB action is the place I ended up doing my apprenticeship and spent many years with that then led me to a bit of a career with Motorola and on to doing my own company and a few things and travel and lots of things. So there you go. Uh, Watson, uh, that's as much of a surprise to you as it is to me. And they, their advert was the only specialist CB shop in South Australia because they concentrated on CB only. Now, Dick Smith was already starting to look at this. You know, he was getting in big time, big adverts, um, you know, just um, importing Sanyos at that stage, obviously. Um, once again, names that I don't remember, to be honest, but um, but it, it's uh, not unusual because I would have been about um, 11 years old or something or younger. <laughs> um Lots of little different articles that, you know, uh, oh, well, I always love these. The the rig tests were always good to read. Um, I've got one of these, and um, this is the initial Panther before they, obviously, this is the crystal locked um, little fella, before they went to uh, uh, Facebook Loop, PLO 2 as and uh, Mobile One, and, geez, I tell you what, that's, um, uh, we had a dollar for every antenna they sold, uh, quite a few. Um little bit of um, sort of specs here basically on, uh, following on from the uh, review of the um, um, Panther there and uh, it's good how they they sort of backed it up with a lot of facts but yeah this is really this is this is so historical um, I'm gonna get a views for this video because it's gonna be longer than I ever would have thought I would spend on a but it is CB action number one you know and I have been chasing it for a while so Bear with my excitement. Now, I've actually got this full setup. It's the Uniden 2020. Um, and um, I've actually got three of them um, because you can. A bit crazy. But this was from Vicom. Now, the chap that owned Vicom, believe it or not, doesn't live too far from me these days. <laughs> and um, he's, a, he's a great guy. Um, but uh, uh, certainly uh, he retired um, some time back and uh, uh, enjoys flying a few planes and an airfield and a few different things. Um, Adelaide Hi-Fi Centre. You'd think I would have remembered this, um, but it, you know, being an Adelaide boy, CB, it's legal. <laughs> um, I won't go into... Um, you know what? I, I think it's 
the adverts that have got us all sort of looking and saying hello and what's that now there now this company i do know one stop truck accessories 275 south road croydon park uh, i used to ride past that place every day on my bike to go to school and um i ended up um uh, getting to know um um uh, phil their uh, service tech uh, extreme phil richards uh, fantastic service tech really nice guy so there's a bit of history isn't it amazing that this national magazine has actually got you know a fair bit of my old culture of south australia you know sitting inside it it's uh, it's quite amazing and of course they they kept an area for trucking and i think that was really important in the era but um yeah wonderful um back in the days of crest and of course you know you had um the uh, emergency channel and that was a very protected channel to uh, try and keep it for that purpose. And um, oh, just once again, more. The people importing Cobras, Shakespeare's. Jeez. 1977. I just keep on saying that. I, I know I keep saying 1977 like, you know, you didn't hear it the first time. All the 10 codes, Q codes, the 10 commandments, thou shalt not. <laughs> yeah, they, they probably didn't live on so well. Um See, once again, you know, people were making money on AM sets, you know, 23 channel, 5 watt AM sets. And uh, look at the accessory prices and bits, you know, um, really wasn't bad. And then you've got all your club registers that we all used to look at and think, is our club in there? South Australia, what do we have? So, yeah, see, a lot of this I don't even remember, to be honest. Uh, it's just going back a little bit too far for me. But um, my goodness. Well, we're coming to a close on CB action number one, and uh, certainly um, it's only inspired me more to go out and collect uh, more and more radios that are inside these things. Isn't it kind of crazy that Recaro seats got the rear of CB action? You know, <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> but you know what? If I was CB action number one and I was just producing my first one, uh, I might want to just take in whatever t advertising revenue I could. So, okay, so that's CB action number one. Probably 13 minutes of your life you can never get back. But, um, yeah, um, you know, I'll, I'll finish on... Oh, I've got to be careful how I take this shot, don't I? You kind of... No, hang on. Must have slipped in, sorry. Um, there you go. CB action number one. Um, in the flesh. And, uh, and I promise you I won't put every... Um, CB action um, made uh, on a video. Just just number one. You can you can go to sleep now knowing just number one. Seventy threes Aussie Radio Triple Four on CB VK three Charlie Mike in Victoria on Ham Radio VK five Bravo Mike in South Australia. Cheers all. All the best. <laughs>